right, welcome. This video is going to show how to remove the solvent out of this flask on a Schlenk line for an air sensitive compound. So the first thing we want to do is we want to put, take off this septum, as you can see it's cracked and there's holes punctured in it already. Uh, we don't want the air to be pulled in by pulling vacuum directly under that, so we're going to want to replace this with a glass stopper. So the first thing we do is we grab a glass stopper, we put some grease on it, so we get that all set. So this is now all set to actually be put in our flask, so we'll set that right there. We need to increase the nitrogen flow, so we do that over here on our regulator. It says increase, so we can go to increase to increase our inflow. You can see that on our inlet bubbler. The bubbles are going a lot more. You can also see that actually on the exit bubbler uh, right there. There's more bubbles going there. So what we can do then is on our Schlenk line, uh, open our gas line here. So you can see that, that's our top one. This will let gas into our reaction. We then open it to our flask. And then under our purge here, we're gonna pop off our septum. You can hear the gas flowing out. That indicates that there is a nitrogen purge. Put the stopper on but you got to hold on to it because if you let go the, the positive pressure will push that out the way we can hold that down is with a rubber band uh, there's a separate video on rubber banding a flask so again you want downward pressure to help hold that on and then we close off the nitrogen close off the line up here we can close off our nitrogen flow and then turn back our gas a little bit over here all right, so now that this is isolated nitrogen, we can now connect it to our vacuum. And the thing to consider about removing solvent on the line is you don't want to remove this directly into your vacuum trap here, because then the solvent will go in here that'll cause problems if you're trying to do further manipulations with any kind of organic compound or solvents or anything like that. It'll mix in there, possibly get reactions in there. Um, <clears throat> also, uh, as you collect more in your main trap, your vacuum will also begin to weaken. So we don't want to do that. We want to use an external trap so that we can still do manipulation with our Schlenk line as we're doing other things. So with that, we need what's known as an external trap that's right here. So as you can see, there's two ways to connect it to the flask, the external trap. You can have the solvent go in this way. This is usually preferred if we have some very small volumes because then it'll actually collect on the outside here and not clog in the middle. So if you have less than 10 milliliters, you wanna have this side connected to your actual flask. If you have larger volumes, you wanna collect it to the other side. So we would spin this around for this particular reaction because we have a little bit more than 10 milliliters here in our reaction flask. So we'll connect this directly to this other side here. The net note that this goes to the inside too, and then that'll cause it to collect out here. And again, what we do a different order is just to try to keep this trap from freezing shut uh, as we collect it in the trap. So this particular, as you can see, this particular external trap, it's got larger hose barbs on it than the actual flask. So we need to do a little bit of different adapting to this. So as you can see with our Schlenk line, we have these nice little ball valves where we can adjust the different two size tubes. So I've already connected the larger size tubing here. Uh, on this far left tap so because again we're going to have the larger uh, volume here so we'll connect the vacuum to the side over here to the vacuum trap and and slide that on so i'll show that again because i think i missed that in the camera so again we'll take that and we'll slide it on to this side and because we're going from a larger diameter tubing to a smaller one, we'll then need to put an adapter to that. So I have an adapter right here. It's a ball valve with kind of a smaller tubing here and a larger tubing on your side. So you can use that to adapt to it. So put the larger side over here and the smaller one on their side. So then you can see is we can just simply pop this off because we're rather under nitrogen and then connect the other side on move over our trap a little bit closer and the first thing we want to do is start by evacuating our trap we want to get all the air out of this 
so that way we don't end up condensing liquid oxygen at all when we put this under a cryogen. So we then open our trap, our vacuum pump here. So you can hear the vacuum evacuating this whole trap setup. And we let that gurgle for a couple seconds. And then we add our liquid nitrogen door underneath. We'll raise that up a little bit so we're completely on our lab jack here. Okay. All right, now that we have this all pumped down, we can now add our liquid nitrogen cryogen. So we have our Dewar. And we add that till it's roughly about here till you can touch it within there briefly. Uh, so you have that all full, so you have enough liquid nitrogen to catch all the respective gases and everything that's pumping down and all the solvent that's being pumped down here in that respective trap. So I'll set the doer down. So now this is all pumped down. We have this all set up here, all pumped down. We're pumped down all the way to here. The next thing we want to do is actually open our flask. So we can do that by turning our stopcock here uh, slowly. You want to do it very slowly because if you have a very really volatile solvent, you want it to flash boil and already pull a bunch of solvent. Sometimes it'll actually bump. Uh, what I mean by bump is it'll get actually some of the solvent that'll come up into here into this actual uh, adapter line. You don't really want to do that. So you slowly, slowly open it a little bit until you just hear it start to gurgle in your pump. You can see that. You can see the bubbles start to show up there a little bit. And then you can open it all the way when you're ready or if you need to, you can just kind of slowly open it and let it go there. And then you rapidly let it go until you're pumping down. So with that, I'll let this continue until we're ready to actually shut off our flask. And I'll show you how to take this apart. All right, we've now finished pumping this respective compound down. This one is actually mostly a liquid, so it didn't pump all the way down. We just pumped a small amount of solvent off in this one. Uh, but anyway, so I've already closed this off here, so we were actually pumping all the way there. We can close it off now to close off the vacuum. We then work backwards, we close this off here. And what you can do then, is you can then pull your trap out of the cryogen here. So we have all our solvent closed off in here. And some people like to actually kind of open this by pulling these off. It, it's kind of how you want to do this. There's two ways you can do it. The safer way is probably to slowly add nitrogen to this by using the nitrogen line up here. So as you can see, I'm slowly letting nitrogen in to fill the trap back up. Uh, the key to be careful with, if you actually just pull one of the hoses off, you rapidly get air come in. Sometimes it can actually shoot your solid around in your trap, have it fly around and hit some things and actually sometimes break your traps. So you want to be careful. Um, so as you can see is now that the pressure is all equalized uh, with our respective system here. So then we can actually pull off our, our sides to our trap here. And then with whatever solvent you have left over, you simply put it in some kind of container here to let it thaw. And then as soon as it's thaw, you can then pour off any solvent that's remaining actually in the waste containers and uh, with that. If you want to continue working on your flask here, if you want to do a continued manipulation, you then can take your schlank line, you can connect it back up and then you need to then cycle your sidearm flask with either nitrogen or vacuum to get this back in an atmosphere if you want to put a septum on here for further manipulations. Uh, or if you're ready to take this in the glove box, make sure it's under uh, under vacuum. Or if you want to continue drying, you can do the, you can do drying on the schlank line and then mix your under nitrogen or vacuum if you're going to bring it into a glove box for any further manipulations there. So with that, that's how to use an external trap to remove solvent on the schlank line. Uh, please see other videos by Chem410. Thank you.